Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, um, I'm very happy to welcome uh, Dr. Sandeep Bora, who's a consultant radiologist at the Max Hospital in New Delhi, uh, closely associated with the liver transplant team there. Uh, am I right, Sandeep, in saying that you are you have a connection with Jaipur? Uh, I'm I'm working at Apollo Hospital Delhi, and I have been closely associated with Dr. Subhash Gupta since 2006. So that is how I happen to be close to their work as well in, okay. in Max. Sorry. And uh, yes, I am uh, associated since I am a graduate from Jodhpur and a postgraduate from Bikanet. And uh, then I got an opportunity to work with the GI and liver team at Apollo since 2000, 2006. So that is how I got uh, associated or involved with the liver transplant team. Okay, so actually, uh, Dr. Shalin Agarwal uh, introduced uh, Dr. Sandeep to me, and that is how I know him. And then Ajay keeps mentioning about you, Ajay Sharma. Uh, unfortunately, he is not well, so he has not been able to join today's session. So, just to give you a brief background of Jaipur Surgical Tutorial, uh, this is an academic activity which we started last year uh, during the COVID time because I thought that since physical uh, meetings and uh, classes are not being held, why not? make use of the online technology. So over a period of time, uh, uh, with the efforts of Anand, who is the coordinator of this program, uh, more than 250, maybe 260 students and teachers have joined uh, this group. In any uh, teaching session, which we hold on Saturday 9 to 10, average attendance ranges from 20 to about maximum 40. So these are all, uh, most of them are MCH and DNB uh, GI surgery students. Uh, so we have had many sessions uh, related to surgery, uh, but uh, we have also tried to rope in the associated uh, departments because I believe that um, even a surgical student should know at least the ABCD of uh, the um, associated specialities. And, and that is why I requested you to give this talk on surgical uh, and radiological uh, anatomy of the liver. Um, so with that brief uh, background, I will uh, hand it over to you. So uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, thank you, Professor Kapoor, uh, for giving me a chance to interact with uh, all of you. Uh, brief background, I am basically a diagnostic radiologist who happens to be uh, working with the liver team primarily as the nature of my work. Since I have been in Apollo for last uh, 15 to 16 years. Um, at this outset, let me first extend my gratitude to Dr. Subhash Gupta, Dr. Shalin, Dr. Neerav, and all tons of liver surgeons, hepatologists, and GI surgeons whom I have worked in last 15 years. And it's been a mutual uh, way of learning, a mutual way of um, interaction with them that both of us have gained and understood a little bit of whatever liver work we do uh, in our day-to-day -day practice. So uh, I will take you through the radiological anatomy of liver. It may sound basic for a lot of things, a lot of times, but I feel that uh, when it comes to resection planning, when it comes to volumetry, when it comes to analysis of various uh, vascular or biliary abnormalities, uh, these simple basic uh, anatomical landmarks do help us in day to day practice and making the uh, and help making the surgery a clean uh, kind of a, uh, um, a phenomenon. Now, you guys know that this is a this is different. The liver resection is complex, it is a bit different than the routine GI surgery, and there is a clear understanding of all the segmental vascular that is required to provide a surgical roadmap. And preoperative imaging significantly reduces the intraoperative surprises and postoperative morbidity. Uh, now, not only does preoperative imaging help in surgical planning, it also helps us in assessing hepatic volumes, which can be uh, related to the uh, workup of liver resections or recipient and donor evaluations. What all modalities do we use when we are evaluating liver? Uh, there is a gamut of all the modalities which includes primarily ultrasound, which stays the mainstay of in a day-to-day -day practice. MD-CT or multi-detector CT or multi-slice CT has gone a long way in bringing a very big change in how we image livers 
and how we uh, analyze the vascular and uh, uh, biliary anatomy. Now, uh, MR has a very distinct advantage since it is the best modality to evaluate liver focal liver lesions. However, the overall spatial resolution of MR is not as good as CT. And I feel that both are used interchangeably in a day-to-day -day practice when a problem-solving tool has to be determined or when a, when a solution has to be given to a particular problem at that point of time. We at our hospital do use a lot of PET-CT and PET-MR. There is a significant debate that all HCCs are not or majority of the HCCs are not pet avid uh, This is a debatable topic internationally. Uh, if you look at all the LIRAD committee guidelines, there is nowhere that PET-CT has been mentioned as a method to evaluate HCCs. Contrary to that, in our experience since 2012-11, when we started using HCC in our liver transplant, uh, we started using PET-CT in our liver transplant work, it helped us in, us in picking few or other odd things or looking at the lesion morphology and then helping us in guide the treatment. For example, in a LDLT setting, which is very different than a DDLT setting, because in an LDLT setting, the patient is actually there, with the donor has been worked up, you're seeing an HCC, you do not know on no one image can tell you the tumor biology, whether you do an MR or a CT, until unless it, is, it has a tumor wing, thrombus, it has metastasis, those things are separate. But even if you have a within a meld or a, uh, within a UCSF criteria HCC, which is a three or four centimeter size in a cirrhotic liver with with uh, with deranged liver functions and some collaterals here and there with no PVT or a hepatic vein thrombus. Now you need something to tell you that is this lesion has metastasized or no. I agree that smaller HCCs with four centimeter lesions you may not see meds. Um, or you may have a chance that the chances of metastasis are less, but in our practice, we have seen uh, even smaller lesions behaving erratically on as far as tumor biology goes. So we rely a lot on PET-CT and PET-MRs, at least for a metastatic workup when we are planning for a big exercise like liver transplant. So that is the carry-home message. That is where we use PET-CT and PET-MR. We do not use it to diagnose an HCC or as a follow-up as well at some times. Now, DSA plays a very important role as far as liver interventions are concerned. Now, <clears throat> a lot is talked about triple-phase CT, four-phase CT, dual-phase CT. So I just want to make it uh, simple and clear that a typical four-phase CT means that you take a non-contrast scan through the liver, you take a late arterial phase through the liver, you take a portovenous phase and a delayed phase. I'll show you images of that. If you delete the plain phase through this, because there is many literature which says that why do you take a non-contrast CT in a cirrhotic liver to look for HCC? You don't need it. So you can avoid the plain scan and start off directly with a late arterial, portovenous and a delayed phase to check for HCCs or any other lesions. The issue arises that if you are doing a scan for the first time, it is always advisable to take a plain scan because you may see some ancillary findings, some regenerative nodules, which were bright on CT or hyperdense on a non-contrast scan. You gave them IV contrast and you write them as hypervascular lesions. But actually, if you look at the plain CT, they were actually bright. So, uh, because of the RN deposition. So, it is, it is an institutional policy, what you try to follow. But this is how classical four-phase and triple-phase CTs have been mentioned. There is some literature which says that you can only take a late arterial and a portal phase to check for a tumor hypervascularity and wash out to comment on presence or absence of an HCC on a CT. And then if you find a lesion, you can do an MR. So this is how we all know non-contrast CTs look like. A word about late arterial phase. Whenever we are doing a liver angiogram for a donor, we are not taking a late arterial phase. We are taking a pure arterial phase, which means that only the artery is seen and no portal vein is seen. However, when you are doing a scan for evaluation of patients with chronic liver disease, you, you will be able to see arterial anatomy even in this, but you also want to see a HCC in the background of this liver. And 99% of HCCs show late arterial enhancement and not an early arterial enhancement. So what do you, how do you make out from your image that this is a late arterial phase? You are seeing the hepatic artery or the aorta and there is early filling of the portal vein. 
but you do not see any hepatic vein channel in the liver. If on any multi-slice CT you are doing this scan blindly without a, uh, without a bolus stacking or an angiogram protocol, if you give contrast at 4 ml per second, acquire the scan at 25 seconds, you will get up early arterial phase or late arterial phase. Now, after almost 65 to 70 seconds, if you acquire the scan, the contrast has dispersed into the hepatocytes and now you start seeing the hepatic veins which are filling up. And a delayed scan typically <laughs> is taken at 5 minutes because all the HCCs which enhanced during the arterial phase will eventually get washed out, not at least even not in the photophase, but on the delayed phase, they will be seen as hypodense or black structures. Now, MR protocol is similar to CT. It has distinct advantages that you can take a diffusion weighted image, which will also help in making out that lesions that have showed distributed diffusion are often uh, usually malignant in a setting of cirrhosis. And then you can, there is no radiation, so you can take a five phase contrast image and you can also subtract your pre and post contrast images to better appreciate lesion enhancement. Because smaller HCCs of less than 1 centimeter may get missed or overlooked on a CT because the inherent tissue contrast between the liver and HCC may not be very good. Now, when we come to the uh, classical anatomy, uh, you guys know better than all uh, that there have been various systems that have been designed. The Connaught system has stood the test of time and it is a very uh, basic module of classifying liver into typical eight segments. The beauty of these eight segments is that all these units have a separate hepatic artery, a separate portal vein branch, a separate bile duct, and a draining hepatic vein. <coughs> so these are typically into eight separate functional units. And each functional unit has its own regenerative capacity. And that is the beauty of liver, that even if you take out 60 to 70% of the liver in a donor, the, not, the remaining liver go, grows back to at least 90% of its weight in six weeks time and that is when the bilirubin gets settled so <coughs> and we all know that in a normal liver 70 percent 75 percent of the blood comes through the portal vein and the remaining comes through the hepat hepatic artery now portal flow is very important in a normal liver for a sustained or a normal hepatocyte function and regeneration Hepatic arterial flow is not needed for hepatic function and regeneration. It is believed that a lot of the um, lot of the hormones, lot of the things from this planktonic circulation help liver in for it maintaining its equilibrium and balance for a normal hepatocyte hepatocellular growth. Any reduction in portal flow, even if EHPVOs, SMV, portal vein occlusions, the hepatic artery takes over. Now, once the hepatic arterial hypertrophy sets in in a liver, in a cirrhotic or a non-cirrhotic background, all this non-stridal hepatic artery uh, hypertrophy that sets in due to reduced portal flow is a base mark or hallmark of tumor angiogenesis. And it is believed that hepatic arterial hypertrophy leads to formations of HCCs in presence of a reduced portal blood flow. So, this is uh, closely linked together. Now, coming on to the basic segments of liver. Uh, the liver has been divided into two lobes, which is the right hemi liver or the right lobe, the left hemi liver or the left lobe, and it is divided by a line that passes through the base of the IVC to, to the gallbladder, also known as the Cantley's line or the classical intersegmental fissure, and, and the middle hepatic vein lies within this middle uh, in within this intersegmental fissure. The this middle hepatic vein divides liver into two components, the left hemiliver and the right hemiliver. The left hepatic vein, on the other hand, divides the left lobe into two components, which is the lateral segment and a medial segment of the left lobe. Now, uh, left hepatic vein is the embryological vein of the left lobe of liver. It will almost always drain segment two. It may not drain three all, always. Right hepatic vein, on the other hand, divides right hemi liver into a posterior section and an anterior section. The portal vein, which is coming, divides the liver in all these segments into superior and inferior components. So the superior one becomes two, the inferior one becomes three, this becomes four A, four B, eight, five, seven, and six. Now, 
as the left hepatic vein is the embryological vein of left lobe of liver right hepatic vein is the embryological vein of right lobe of liver it drains 100% of time segment 7 rest all right lobe segments may open into rhv or may go into the mhv middle hepatic vein is the most variable vein in the liver and it classically drains the central portions of liver but this physiology this uh this normal finding is seen in 70 to 80% of patients not 100% of patients segment 3 segment 6 can also open into the middle hepatic vein so, and segment 2 and segment 7 never open into the middle hepatic vein this is a rule so middle hepatic vein is actually a vein of the central segments of liver which has a highest variable anatomy and it is believed in lot of textbooks that god created middle hepatic vein for liver to be used in classical liver resections so uh, it is once you are looking at the hepatic venous anatomy it is most important to see where is the mhv draining what all veins mhv are draining because the moment you cross clamp it the area is getting going to get congested so to prevent intraoperative surprises it is always advisable from a radiology perspective that you map each and every vein that is going into the middle hepatic vein because it forms important landmark as we will discuss so now this is how a classical right hemi liver resection occurs in a donor setting uh, we never never we take middle hepatic veins with the uh, with the donor liver it is with the graft liver it is always left back with the donor there are areas of congestion are measured on table in segment 8 and 5 there are a lot of automatic softeners that are available which will tell you the congestion volume once you clamp the middle hepatic vein uh, on a 3d module um, we have we use them also but we rely a lot on our own experience the way we have designed our workflow in radiology and in surgery so another important point that i would like to mention to you at the venous anatomy is that left hepatic vein and middle hepatic vein joined together to form a common stump which may be small large depending on its length is very variable before they insert into the ivc in 95 to 99% of patients you will rarely see a left hepatic vein directly opening into the mhv in that case it will not be the classical left hepatic vein it will be a surface vein which would be draining from the surface of the liver in segment 2 and then would be going into the left ivc directly seeing that surface vein is also very important because if you are doing a left lateral rival resection for a donor hepatectomy to be used in a pediatric setting you need to preserve that vein because uh, even uh, uh, and then do a back bench venoplasty and try and create a single lhv ostium for an anastomosis at the ivc in the recipient liver so if you are seeing a thin vein running at the surface of the liver it will not be the left hepatic vein it might be an accessory segment 2 branch accessory segment 3 branches are never seen and left hepatic vein primarily runs just it inserts at the mhv almost at the landmark where if you draw a line from the falciform ligament go superiorly you invariably see because uh, when you are calculating volumes of the uh, lateral segments this helps as a very big landmark that once you start tracing the falciform ligament go up that is the point where lhv will intersect with the mhv in larger in majority of the patients the variations can occur now um, you all are well versed with the common surgical uh, uh, resections that are performed in a routine liver resection this is an example of right hepatectomy or an extended right a left or an extended left and then a posterior sectionectomy or an anterior sectionectomy and a lateral and segment 4 resection these are typical settings of cagb these are typical settings of donor oblique hcc's these are again typical settings of cholangiocarcinoma posterior section again for hepatocellular resections or for donor hepatectomies especially if the right lobe is very big and you have a huge chunk 600 700 cc of posterior sector you may very well use the posterior sector although lot of surgeons surgical colleagues feel that it is not related to volume you should also see how many segments number of segments you are putting back into the recipient this is a debatable topic uh, so but a uh, lot of centers who have gained experience of using posterior section grafts with good results are doing posterior sec uh, sectoral grafts in liver transplant um, 
in settings where the left lobe volumes are very less. Now, coming to the routine axial CT images, depending on which way you are uh, viewing, majority of the times the first left lobe liver segment that you will see is segment 4A. As you go down, you will start seeing segment 2 and this is the left hepatic vein which forms the junction of 2 and 4A. This is the middle hepatic vein which will separate 4A from segment 8 and the right hepatic vein forms a landmark between 8 and 7. Uh, as a matter of a rule, segment 2 is always bigger than segment 4. Very rarely you will see 4 is bigger than 2. Segment 8 is 100% times bigger than segment 7. Segment 6 is 100% times bigger than segment 5. No confusion in this. Uh, <clears throat> as you come down, you will see that this is the middle hepatic vein. If you draw a straight line, it will land up at the porta at the point of intersection where the portal vein will be divided. This relationship stands true in 90% of the individuals. I'll show you some examples for that. So once you have come down, the segment 2 and 3 start visual, getting visualized. This is 4B, this is 8, and this is 7. Now, as you come down, the right portal vein is started seeing and the porta has come. So this would start to become the part of segment 6. This is the part of 8 oblique 5. This is classical 4B. This is the falciform ligament and this is segment 3. And corded lobe is defined as segment 1. Now, almost in all cases, segment 8 has two portal vein branches. So please remember that if there has been an atrophy of the anterior sector and you are seeing segment 7 lying here, but you are seeing a single portal vein branch, then it is not segment 8. Please remember, segment 8 has two bile ducts in the parenchyma which join to form a single segment 8 duct, which joins to form the segment 5 duct to form the right anterior sectoral bile duct. Single right anterior portal vein divides into segment 8 and 5 branches always always segment 8 has two portal vein branches not one and same stands for duct same stands for the artery now uh, sometimes this is the right hepatic vein you can see that this posterior branch of the segment 8 may take off from segment 7 and cross the rhv and supply segment 8 such livers cannot be used for right posterior resection or a right anterior resection either you will cut the supply for this uh, if you are doing a posterior sector or you will necrose segment 8 if you uh, chop off the segment 7. So you have to be very careful and look at these two branches. They should always be seen on your axial CT images. You do not need 3Ds to uh, work, out the, uh, uh, work out the liver anatomy or the liver variation. You can always see them on axial images and I will show you how to follow that. Now as you come down, uh, there is an imaginary line which divides segment 5 to 6. There can sometimes be a fissure that can be seen at the inferior edge of liver. There is no name for that fissure, but I have seen when you are doing a liver volumetry, there is a dimple into the inferior edge of the liver, which marks a zone for segment 5 and 6. The best way to trace segment 5 and 6 is start tracing the anterior sectoral portal vein. The segment 5 portal vein will never supply segment 6 and segment 6 portal vein will never supply segment 5. So that is how uh, people say that hepatic veins divide liver into its segments. I feel actually the artery and portal flows determine this and hepatic veins eventually lie at a point of draining the segments. Now coming on to the arterial anatomy, this is a classical uh, uh, normal hepatic arterial anatomy whereby CHA arises from the celiac axis, divides into a proper hepatic artery after giving off GDA, which divides into a left and a right hepatic artery branch. This is what is called the standard arterial anatomy seen in 55 to 60 percent of the individuals. Now, 45 percent of the individuals will have some variation to this standard hepatic arterial anatomy. You do not need to remember or follow any classification. Michel's classification held good till 2007, 8, 10. Now, with so much of imaging happening left around the corner around the globe, the variations are much, much more seen than you have uh, mentioned or than you see them mentioned in Michel classification. Apart from the type 1 or type 2, we rarely classify in our reports. It is more important that you identify what is the artery supplying which segment and from a surgical standpoint of view, which is to be preserved. A normal right hepatic artery divides into an anterior sectoral branch and a posterior sectoral branch. Segment 6 artery usually arises before the segment 7 artery from the posterior sector artery. 
as i mentioned segment 8 artery always has two branches which go into the liver parenchyma on a sagittal plane if i have to draw an imaginary line this would be the line of my right hepatic vein and you can see that there is a zone of non enhancement if you start seeing liver 5000 10000 times on a ct image you will start realizing that there is a natural zone of ischemia which god has created once you look at the sagittal image between the anterior sector and a posterior sector liver and as you can make out that 8 is always bigger than 7 and 6 will always be bigger than 5 5 usually has one arterial branch only the second most commonest variant is separate origin of these vessels whereby left hepatic artery supplies segment 2 3 and 4 arises from the proximal right hepatic artery it is also called as middle hepatic artery in some literature now initially we were we used to get confused which is the left hepatic artery so embryologically any left artery which is to the left of the left portal vein is the lha so please remember this thing so uh, this is the area where the left portal vein will be located if the segment 4 is arising from the left hepatic artery it will cross the portal vein and go into the left segment 4 segment but if there is a separate segment 4 artery it will always be seen to the right of the left portal vein i have never never seen a segment 4 artery a separate segment 4 artery ascending to the left of the left portal vein and crossing to the right side this is almost not seen so if you are seeing a vessel which takes off from the left of the left portal vein it will give one twig to segment 2 and 3 because actually that is the left hepatic artery so for all practical liver resections you need to preserve that because a lot of my surgeons say that boss segment 4 artery left hepatic artery nahi hoti so on all liver left lobe liver resections you should preserve if you have to reimplant it in liver resection it doesn't matter now another important variation is that sometimes the right arteries can take off from the left artery so these lot of permutation combinations exist it is better in such cases if you are doing a right lobe liver resection you land up with two right lobe arteries and lot of times you see tiny twigs of accessory right pulmonary arteries initially it was believed that these are end arteries but eventually uh, on table we have realized that they back bleed a lot once you put a cross clamp onto this or you dissect this it starts filling from the main intrahepatic anastomosis and a good back bleed starts as a protocol we always re anastomose all the hepatic arteries into the recipient back of arteries which are less than more than 1 mm in caliber uh, less than vessels less than 1 mm we take a call in the or rooms whether to re anastomose it or no depending on how much back bleed is coming through the vessel another important word of hyler plate collaterals uh, they form a important imaging finding if you actually see them on the ct uh, it is important to look at celiac axis narrowings or sma narrowings in all patients when you are doing a ct and you are planning to do a ct for liver imaging no liver is complete without looking at the celiac or the sma like you can see that this is a celiac axis occlusion there is a large collateral which from the pancreatic duodenal groove which refills the right hepatic artery and then there are hyaluronic plate collaterals which are crossing the biliary plate filling the segment 4 and the left hepatic artery branches so this if you are planning to use this liver for liver resection you cannot ligate the rha here and take the right lobe because this soul will also get devascularized as the entire supply of the left lobe is coming through the sma using these collaterals so if you are planning to do a liver resection or this is actually a donor scan so if you are planning to do you have to preserve this arachid and transect the arteries here now it is important for the radiologist to see whether this branching is extrahepatic or intrahepatic on a mip image on a 3d image you can never make out whether this is in in the liver or outside the liver you have to always see your basic axial images whether you see fat around the porta here or no it is because uh, tackling these hyaluronic collaterals in a donor may land up into catastrophe and more often you may actually devascularize the bile duct if you are planning to go into the hilum here close so it is very important to look at these hyaluronic collaterals i many a times patients a few times if you are seeing like we we do not prefer donors after polycystectomy because you do not know ke koi us bed mein injury to nahi ho gayi thi bile duct pe hyaluronic plate pe basically um, during the polycystectomy procedure so because if i am seeing if i am seeing 1000 liver angiograms say in 3 months time or 4 months time i uh, i see some of the times that during some previous surgery that the right hepatic artery or one of its posterior branch has got a uh, 
uh, got ligated during the surgery done somewhere so then the posterior branch is filling through the hilar collateral so such patients cannot undergo liver resection it will be a catastrophe so it is very important for the radiologist to see the porta structures as well a word about a very important entity which is the replaced right abdomen uh in the first 10 years of our practice we loved this vessel for liver resections replaced rhk rarely has had a branch to the left lobe and it was always believed that rhk if it arises from the sma supplies the right lobe only we had never seen a left artery or any other vessel arising from the replaced rhk and it was a very safe vessel um increasingly we started seeing left replaced right hepatic arteries in scenarios with operable ca head pancreas or periampullary carcinomas in that case if the primary lesion was operable we just the the rha was resected and blocked and reanastomosed back using a venous or an arterial graft uh, so it is important for the radiologist to look at the replaced rha because it will travel into the pancreatic duodenal groove before it moves into the hepatodural ligament into the liver parenchyma now of late in last 6 7 years we have started increasing number of times seeing that once you see a rha guys you can see this is the segment 4 artery which is rising from the rha and there is an accessory rha right hepatic artery from the segment 4 artery now this is you cannot use this replaced rha for reanastomosis you land into trouble you will devascularize or you will congest segment 4 as well but again if you see this is the left hepatic artery which arises from the celiac axis and again if you see this is the portal vein so this is the lha and this is segment 4 artery you can call it middle hepatic artery it's your it's your um, choice there is no nomenclature for this and there is no hard and fast rule to uh, label this and in this case you can see that there is an accessory segment 5 despite rha rising from sma so crossovers can occur even in rha territories Uh, increasingly we have also started we were always mentioning from where is the cystic artery rising because we have started preserving all the gallbladder in left hepatectomies and left lateral resections so it is important that we do not ligate cystic artery cystic artery not always arises from rha it can arise from segment 4 artery 2 3 artery from gda from proximal hepatic from rha from anterior branch or from a posterior branch it can arise from anywhere there are eight combinations from where cystic artery can arise so it is always good that if you see it, you mention it that from where is cystic artery rising now the beauty about portal phase a true portal phase is this forms the landmark of the intersection between right and left lobe of liver the right portal vein never crosses into the left lobe territory the left portal vein never crosses into the right portal vein territory and actually this forms a clear demarcation between the right and left lobe the middle hepatic vein happens to lie between this plane it does not form the landmark for uh right and left lobes of liver i feel that arteries and portal vein form because that is how you cross clamp put an arterial bulldog or you clamp the artery or the portal vein you create a zone of ischemia you start cutting it with your uh, uh, the liver you start resecting the liver and then you encounter the hepatic veins so you don't see mhv on a surface anatomy in a liver when you are doing liver resection so that is how a radiologist should always follow the portal vein branching pattern to demarcate which is the right and left lobe now why do i say in 99.9% of time mhv will line at the zone of ischemia created between the two portal veins but in 1% it may not so those scenarios are different it is for the radiologist surgeon to look at very carefully just like artery the right portal vein divides into an anterior posterior branch sometimes you may have a trifurcation pattern of the portal veins sometimes you may have the anterior sector taking off from the left portal vein in such cases you should see whether this point of origin is lying within the mhv or no because if this point is off center to the middle hepatic vein your biliary plate abnormalities will start seeing so you should be careful with the bile duct anomalies in these and this is a non doable hepatic anatomy whereby the segment 8 or the anterior portal vein arises within the parenchyma of the liver and then goes into the right lobe you can't transect this uh, anterior portal vein and this is just an example of a single portal vein or a type e portal vein anatomy you may have accessory portal veins from the left supplying right and from right supplying left it is important to match them uh, look at their diameter tell where are they located in presence of the ischemic plate or the line of the mhv if you see this is the line of the mhv this black area this is the intersection of the left and the right portal vein but this accessory vein is going into segment 8 so when the surgeon reaches here he will clamp this and take it and we always use this back into as back bench reconstructive methods if you are doing a right lobe liver resection for a donor hepatectomy coming on to the hepatic 
veins. The segment four and five veins join almost at the level of portal to form a single vein, which becomes the MHV. Then variable number of segment eight veins keep opening into the middle paddock vein, and this is the segment four vein into the MHV. There is thirty to forty percent of segment eight, which also goes into the left vein. And if you go up, you will see that these two will eventually join before they insert into the middle paddock vein. And this is how all our uh, river resections are formed. You guys know it better. Uh, uh, thirty percent of patients will have accessory hepatic veins, also called as inferior hepatic veins. All inferior veins of more than three mm are preserved as far as liver resections are concerned. Now, this is an example of a MHV dominant liver. Here you can see the right hepatic vein falls short. Uh, it supplies only segment seven, and six is going into the middle hepatic vein. So, if you are doing a left hepatectomy, you will congest eight and six and five. So, only Vein running the liver will be segment uh, seven vein, which is the right hepatic vein. So look at the amount of chunk of liver you will congest if you do left hepatic vein. This. So whenever the MHV is going to segment six, left liver resection is ruled out. Is ruled out. Uh, there is it, that is different. If you are doing it for an HCC, then you put a vein graft, a new MHV, you create it back into the recipient, and then you reanastomose the cut surface veins of five and six back into the liver, uh, back into the graft. But for donor hepatic veins, this is a standard out for left lobe liver resection. <clears throat> now we use MR. Mm. We generally confirm our MR findings when you are doing complex hepatic resections with an intraoperative cholangiogram. Otherwise, uh, in 2006 the scenario was very bad. But with improving MR equipment, uh, you see a decent kind of image quality as far as biliary anatomy is concerned. This is a classical type one biliary anatomy. This is the cystic duct inserting into the CHD, forming the CBD. <coughs> this is a so-called trifurcation pattern of the right ducts, which is confirmed on the intrahepatic cholangio. This is another second commonest which we see is type three A, where the posterior sectoral duct crosses over to the biliary plate onto the left side. This insertion point will always be to the left of the left portal vein origin. This insertion point will always be to the left of the middle paddock vein. So. Once you are transecting liver, you have to be very careful in ligating this vessel, uh, ligating this bile duct, and invariably um, you should always cross check with the portal vein an anomalies in such scenarios. So this is a classical type three A portal vein uh, biliary anatomy. Many a times you may have accessory right ducts or accessory right posterior ducts opening into the cystic duct. These are the scenarios whereby if you if a polycystectomy has been done. And you ligate the cystic duct, you eventually land up ligating ligating the right hepatic ducts as well. So uh, I request radiologists for last many decades that if you are doing a MRCP to in polycystic patient, do not look at CBD calculus only. Please look at the biliary anatomy, which is also an important form of your evaluation. Ninety nine percent of time patient ko kuch nahi hoga. Lekin agar koi accessory duct, koi accessory channel aa raha tha into the cystic duct. Which you were seeing, you could have saved the patient's segment from injury intraoperatively. Or वो बाद में उसको biliary cirrhosis हो जाएगा, biliary plate, high vascular plates injur हो जाएगी. So you you don't gain anything, and then it is very easy refer to higher center. वो higher center वाला भी क्या करेगा? You can't reanastomose that duct back. So the patient will develop recurrent cholangitis in that duct not draining. So it is a very basic thing that a radiologist should have seen that on an MRCP that not only assess the CBD. But access upper conscious channels hain and kaise hain? If at all, even if it is normal, if it's type one, doesn't matter. But you must always look. And on MR, apart from artery, you can see portal vein and hepatic vein channels very easily. And then you can have scenarios with multiple ducts. A word about left-sided uh, gallbladder. Um, this is an entity. See if I am seeing. Um, uh, I see three, four left-sided gallbladders every year. So on any CT abdomen, also you can see. Point of that we should be very careful is that if the gallbladder is lying at the level of the falciform ligament, that means there are two lobes in liver. One is lateral segment, and then the entire liver. There is no segment four, no anterior, no posterior sector. Characterizing this intrahepatic arterial or vascular anatomy will be a challenge. You cannot use this liver for resection. Only lobe which you can resect is the lateral segment. So if it is a pediatric donor, you can still take the lateral segment of this and get away with it. But Opening this liver is a big challenge and should not be done. So we reject all left side gallbladder for a donor evaluations. Um, in initial years, we have had one uh, one uh, surprise intraoperative, which was a left side gallbladder, and it was our mistake. We were not aware of this entity in two thousand six. 
and so that the transplant had to be cancelled and abandoned. So please be careful. Always look at where is the gallbladder. This is the falciform ligament. If you see GB below falciform ligament, it is left side gallbladder. Forget about liver resection in such cases. Another sometimes you see is high on you have done a non-contrast CT. You see a high density liver. It is typically because of iron overload situations, patients with glycogen storage disease or Wilson's disease. And now let me talk about a very common entity that is seen is fatty liver. Uh, um, CT, I have realized in 15 years, does a very important role in giving you an assessment that whether the liver is fatty or no. If um, all the livers that are fatty will be seen as black or hypodense area, they will be blacker than the spleen. So depending on how much black is it, you quantify or grade these things. So you should measure the liver density at multiple places. Uh, one, one thing more, fatty infiltration may not be diffuse like this. It may also be patchy. When you see patchy fatty liver infiltration, it is usually more in the right lobe than in the left lobe. Why? Because the right portal flow, uh, right portal vein has a more parallel or tangential flow from the splanchnic circulation, while left has an upward twist. That's a theory that's been proposed. That is why hepatic abscesses are more common in the right lobe. That is why fatty infiltration is more common in right lobe if it is patchy. Now, you should always measure the liver density uh, at multiple places. And average liver density is always more than 50 Hounsfield units. So, and it is generally more than 5 Hounsfield units than spleen. So, it is called a liver attenuation index or an LAI. So, if the liver attenuation index is more than plus 5 or plus 6, uh, it, it is always indicates that there is no fat in liver or if at all, it will be not more than 5% macrovesicular stethosis. However, if the liver starts getting black and black, black and black on the native area, if it is looking blacker than the spleen, this will always be more than 30% macrovesicular stethosis. You may measure the LAI, you may not measure the LAI. If it is a donor, you can cancel the uh, scan on table just by looking at this. And if you somehow happen to see something like this, this patient needs treatment. Because this is significant fatty infiltration in liver. The liver has become so black. So, um, if you are seeing unenhanced hepatic veins as white structures, that means that so much of fat that the hepatic vein, which has a density of blood and a normal unenhanced blood has a density of 50 to 60. So, that means this liver will be 20 HU or 0 HU. So, there will be significant fatty infiltration. Any radiologist who sees fatty infiltration in a routine CT, in a KUB scan, in a kidney scan should also mention it as a part because such patients may have deranged LFTs and uh, treatment can be uh, started to start off with. So that is all what I had to share uh, with you guys. Uh, thank you so very much again for uh, giving me an opportunity to uh, share our experience with you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sandeep. It was very heartening to see a radiologist uh, using terms like uh, back bench, back breeding, and so many surgical terms. So uh, it's good to see a radiologist with a surgical uh, thought process in mind. Uh, I'm very happy that I invited you to uh, present, make this presentation. Uh, students first. Yeah, please unmute yourself and ask. This is a very good opportunity to clear all your doubts about the radiological anatomy of the liver. So, uh, uh, Sandeep, you mentioned about um, uh, your uh, uh, philosophy that it is the uh, artery and portal vein which divides the right and left and not the middle hepatic vein. Uh, oh, good. Ajay has joined. Ajay has joined. Ajay, please uh, come in. Hello, Ajay. Ajay, unmute yourself. Hi Sandeep, morning, uh, morning, Dr. Kapoor. Hello, boss. Morning. Uh, Sandeep, see, nice Hello. to see you after a long time. Uh, same here, boss. I always claim uh, one of the best radiologists that I know, and fortunately, one of my best friends, Sandeep, is always with us uh, for, and we have taken his support long, many times for uh, for, for assessing our uh, uh, development into radiology, how we are learning it. Uh, Sandeep, I think uh, I would like to suggest Dr. Kapoor about few things uh, what you have presented. That one thing is you need, I think, uh, six to seven sessions to for us to make us understand what actually the anatomy is because one session is too small for this. You have taken years okay. to develop this. You have taken many years to understand it. For us to understand in one session, it is very, very uh, small session. 
and specifically for the residents i think it will take longer sessions which will make us uh, everybody feel comfortable with the anatomy now because basically okay. we all understand some of the part of it but uh, important aspects which we all need to understand will take a long time some some questions sandeep uh, uh, <laughs> you mentioned about a landmark for right and left hepatic uh, for, uh, right and left lobe of liver mhm mm you told it is portal vein and not middle hepatic vein conceptually we always felt middle hepatic vein so can you elaborate on that uh yeah, actually i also wanted to ask because many surgeons use intraoperative navigation either with ultrasound or with other uh, methods and then mhv is taken as the so if we are resecting or whether we are taking liver for donation uh, most of us have that thought process so yes please do elaborate on that nay right. uh, from a liver uh, uh, resection uh, purpose ajay sabse pehle to artery portal vein clamp hoti hai na zone of ischemia mark ho jata hai liver surface pe Hmm. So MHV lies within that zone of ischemia. आप ही किसी को तो landmark मान के काटते हो। जय एक मिनट एक मिनट। Sometimes, sometimes uh, there are few cases. I would say one percent of the time, MHV will not lie within the line where the zone of ischemia has been created. This occurs specially with variant liver anatomies, with variant venous anatomies. So if you are uh, seeing only the MHV, only the MHV on imaging also, if you see this is the only MHV. and i have seen uh, segment 4 veins crossing over to the right side and drain opening into segment 8 vein and then opening into the mhv ab aap usko 4a manoge ya 8 manoge wo 4a vein thi ab aapne usko 4a kaise banaya because it was supplied by the 4a portal vein and not drained by the 4a hepatic vein ye conceptually thoda sa alag lagta hai uh, main aapko cases aaj mere paas itna wo main kar nahi paya main aapko 15 20 aise cases dikhaunga jisme segment 4a ki hepatic vein is going into the 8 vein जब हम सर्जिकल रिसेक्शन करते हुए वेन्स को अलग करते आते हैं टॉप पे तो हमें एक वेन मिलती है रनिंग सुपीरियर और पैरेलल टू दी एमएचवी जिसको हम एट वेन मानते हैं क्योंकि हम राइट ऑफ लिवर पे हैं ये कई बार मतलब हम मतलब हमारे साथ भी इशू हुआ है और ये बाइल्डक्स में भी इशू हुआ है क्योंकि बाइल्डक में हम जब इंट्रॉप सी आर पे दो प्लेन में स्कैन करते हैं वो कई बार थ्री प्लेन नहीं बनता सो कई बार अपने आप हमें भी कंफ्यूजन हो जाता है हमने एमआर पे किसको एट बोला था और ये कौन सी निकली सो so, क्योंकि वहां अब कोई देर इज नो पॉइंट इन देर इज नो चांस ऑफ गोइंग बैक अंडरस्टैंड अब तो वो खुल गया काम सो सो वी हैव लर्न इट दिस वे दैट समटाइम्स यू विल सी दैट सेगमेंट एट वेन नेवर प्रोसेस द एमएचवी टू ओपन इनटू फोर ए वेन बट 10% ऑफ टाइम्स फोर ए वेन विल क्रॉस द एमएचवी एंड एंटर इनटू द एट वेन एंड देन ओपन इनटू द एमएचवी so you have to ligate that eight vein if you are four a vein if you are doing liver resection or you cut the eight vein to the right of where that four a vein is coming aur usko mhv ke sath hi chhod do leave that part ka agar aapka volume bahut kam hai to so ye isiliye ek ek landmark hai kyunki radiologist kya confuse karte hain middle hepatic vein ko mark ab ye iska role kahan aata hai aapne 3d volumetric work station kar li hai axial image koi dekhta nahi ab jo middle hepatic vein hai usko landmark ban ke hum uska right aur left lobe liver volume calculate kar dete hain अगर सेगमेंट सिक्स एमएचवी में जा रहा था तो आपने बहुत सारा सेगमेंट फाइव बी लेफ्ट लोब में मेजर कर दिया उठा के ऑन अ थ्री डी वर्क स्टेशन अब आप फंस गए आपने मापा लेफ्ट लोब वॉल्यूम फोर्टी परसेंट है सर जब हमने क्रॉस क्लैम किया इस जोन ऑफ स्की में तो बहुत कम आ रहा है है ना वो इसीलिए आ रहा है क्योंकि इनफ्लो आउटफ्लो मिसमैच था आपने ये ध्यान ही दिया कि सेगमेंट सिक्स वॉज गोइंग इन टू एमएचवी थ्री डी वर्क स्टेशन ने एमएचवी के राइट का लेवर राइट बना दिया लेफ्ट का लेवर लेफ्ट बना दिया जो एमएचवी के लेफ्ट पे लेवर था वो एक्चुअली सेगमेंट फाइव था बॉस वो फोर नहीं था तो ऐसे सिनेरियो ऐसे क्रिएट हो जाते हैं तो मैं हमेशा जब वॉल्यूमेट्री करता हूं बिकॉज मैं बड़ा क्लासिकल कन्वेंशनल टीचिंग आदमी हूं मैं एक्सिल इमेजेस से ही डील करता हूं अपने काम को और मैं हमेशा मैंने कभी थ्री डी वर्क स्टेशन यूज नहीं किया मेरा ड्रॉबैक भी है हमारे पास सारे थ्री डी वर्क स्टेशन है बट आई एम कॉन्फिडेंट ऑन माई एक्सिल वॉल्यूमेट्री क्योंकि मेरे को दिन में दस पंद्रह वॉल्यूम निकालने सेक्शन के इसके उसके मैं थ्री बनाने लगा तो मेरा तो रात तक काम ही खत्म नहीं हुआ so on my axial image only I have to determine ये boss ये एम ये ग्राफ्ट के साथ रहेगा या ये डोनर के साथ आएगा सो so, मैं उसी पोर्टल वेन को लैंडमार्क मान के चलता हूँ बिकॉज बिकॉज इफ यू आर टेकिंग आउट राइट लोब इट हैज टू हैव एन इन फ्लो इट डजेंट मैटर अबाउट दी एम एच वी इफ आई मेजर सेगमेंट फोर एज माई राइट राइट लोब ऑफ लिवर इफ दी बिकॉज इट वॉज फॉलोइंग टू दी राइट ऑफ द मिड लाइन और देन आई डोट नॉट बिकॉज नीचे कई बार गॉल बैटर फोसा शैलो होता है पॉलिसी सेट में हो गई या वैसे शैलो होता है फोर बी और फाइव का लैंडमार्क ही नहीं होता नहीं तो 
So in my right lobe volume, if I'm measuring 4B, I'm not doing just justice. So yeah. the portal Sandeep, will I think always be used as a landmark. What you're saying is correct, but I think for the student's perspective, still because what you're saying is when you are doing the anatomical resection, portal vein should be considered because when you like it, the portal vein you have a line of ischemia and that divides between the right and the left lobe. That's what you want correct, to conceptualize. Correct. But for the students, still for because most of these students are MC students. For them, Some is it still one. that the middle hepatic vein should be taken between division between right and left lobe? Or yes, yes, it is. It is because the if right. they say in exam, <laughs> they will say for a maybe for a transplant, this there may be this. What ah, you are saying is someone, absolutely yeah. correct after experience. Uh -huh. I think that I is very important point. information what you have given already. That uh, definitely a portal venous anatomy should be taken more into consideration for dividing into right and left lobe because that will be the ultimate line of demarcation for us. Correct. So I was just talking in the word ultimate. Aap ki kar rahe ho. Yes. Uh, you are telling something about hyaluronic collaterals uh, following a lap coli. Yes. So uh, that is uh, for any lap coli, you do take them into consideration that uh, the patient is going into liver resection. You have to see those collaterals are always there. The yes, collateral always, part. always. Uh, yeah. Without the celiac axis SMA narrowing, also you can have hyaluronic collaterals in in some cases. Say once or two times in a year, you will see them. But point is that uh, uh, point is boss ke jaise, suppose uh, segment six or five ki artery segment four se aari thi. Wo biliary plate cross karke right me aari thi. Or jab usne laparoscope kiya, jis general surgeon ne jisne bhi kiya, usne samjha ye cystic artery aari hai niche maine isko band diya. Ya usme se cystic artery rise ho rahi thi, wo band gayi. Hai na? Ab ya to wo liver me bile duct bhi injury ho jayegi invariably. To wo या तो उसका लिवर सिरोसिस होगा बिलरी उसको सेकेंडरी बिलरी सिरोसिस होगा या उसकी डक डायलेट हो चुकी होगी सो so, हमें ना थोड़ा अनकंफर्टेबल रहते हैं डोनर हेपेटाइटिस में जब गॉल ब्लैडर निकला हुआ हो सो इट इज ऑलवेज वेरी आई वाज जस्ट ट्राइंग टू फोर वॉन मैं ये नहीं कहता कि हर केस में होता है 99% केस में कुछ नहीं होता बट वो 1% आपके टेबल पे कौन सा निकलेगा ये बॉस आपको पहले देखना है आप मिस्टेक कर ही नहीं सकते छोड़ने की क्योंकि डोनर लाइफ है वो खुल चुका है लिवर तब अंदर जाकर थोड़ा ना देखोगे कि बॉस बिलरी प्लेट इंजर्ड थी Sandeep, seeing to your knowledge and seeing to your experience, wide experience into it, I would request Dr. Kapoor that we'll, we'll invite you for a week to uh, Mahatma Gandhi and then we can have a continuous one week. We can, we can, we can get a lot of information from you, which is actually a very finer practical details which you are giving for, uh, to all of us. I think uh, that will be very important. So maybe uh, I have many more questions, but may, if somebody else has questions, most welcome. Maybe Dr. Kapoor, you can continue with the, your questions if you have any. Yeah. Uh, so students, whatever I have learned is from my surgical colleague. I owe all this to my GI surgeon and surgical colleague, Dr. Subhash Gupta, Nirav, Shalin Boss, Giriraj, you Ajay. We have learned a lot how to interact with clinicians during our PG with you. So that thing has continued. I'm just lucky with that. That's I said one of your uh, slides regarding triple phase CT. In the case of liver, you told that it's a late arterial portal and delayed delayed phase. Yes. But sir, in case of our liver donor workup, we usually, ah. yeah, you know, in a triple phase, we do arterial portal venous and hepatic venous ah. phase. Right. So, I will clear kar deta If you are doing a donor scan, you have to take true arterial. There is no confusion. Nahi hai. True arterial, true portal, and a venous phase. <laughs> ठीक है लेकिन अगर आप CLD के पेशेंट का वर्कअप कर रहे हैं तो ट्रू आर्टेरियल फेज में HCC एनहांस नहीं करता HCC लेट आर्टेरियल फेज में करता है एंड CLD के पेशेंट में हेपेटिक आर्टरी के अलावा यह भी देखना है कि पैरेंकाइमा में कोई लीजन तो नहीं है जो एनहांस नहीं कर रहा क्योंकि अगर आपने ट्रू आर्टेरियल किया वो एनहांस नहीं किया और पोर्टो वीनस पे एक हाइपोडेंस लीजन दिख गया तो आप उसको आर्टरी में ढूंढोगे एनहांस कर रहा था नहीं कर रहा था वो अर्ली आर्टेरियल में कभी करेगा ही नहीं so, you will say that query reason related nodule is arterial hypervascularity. It is wrong actually. It was arterial hypervascular. You have scan phase wrong phase. So, you have to take it in the late arterial phase and not early arterial phase. That's the difference between the donor and CLD. The rest is the same. Yes. Thank you. Any other student, faculty member? I can see Karan. Karan, you want to make any comment? No, sir. It was a really a nice and elaborate presentation. It was very good, sir. No more queries. 
any other uh, student or faculty member who is involved in transplant would like to ask anything Ajay, you want to say something? Yeah. Okay, uh, let me let me come back now. Sandeep, MRCP for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. You said the 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 duct anatomy that the right uh, the, uh, the right duct draining into the cystic duct. Normally yes. for a lap coli, MRI is not done. So these type yes. of injuries we come to know only after the injury has happened. Correct. So that is unfortunate. Okay. I agree. कोई गाइडलाइन नहीं है और इट इज नॉट एडवाइजेबल ऑल्सो कि आप एमआरसीपी करें लैब कोली के लिए लेकिन होता क्या है बुरा तब लगता है कि जब एच जीओटीपीटी बढ़ा हुआ था एल्फॉस बढ़ा हुआ था बिलोरूबिन नॉर्मल था पेशेंट को पेन थी कोली सिस्टेक कोली कॉलबेटर स्टोन थे छोटे छोटे थे एम आर वॉज डन टू लुक फॉर सीबीडी डायलिटेशन और सीबीडी स्टोन उसने देखा देर इज नो सीबीडी कैलकुलस जयराम जी की कोली लिथेसिस और लैब कोली हो गई लैब कोली में आपने देखा कि बिल इंजरी हो गई तो भाई वो पहले देख लेना था ना कि वो बायोडक्ट ऐसा मैं नहीं कह रहा हंड्रेड परसेंट आएगी मैं फोर वन कर रहा हूं सर मैं सिर्फ फोर वन कर रहा हूं इसमें गाइडलाइन नहीं बना रहा मैं वेरिएशन इट हैज़ बी सीन इफ यू हैव डन एमआर शुड बी सीन और जब आपने एमआर आर कर ही लिया सीबीडी देखने के लिए तो अंदर बायोडक्ट की नाटवी भी देख लो ज्यादा से ज्यादा नॉर्मली होगी ना रिप्लेस राइट हेपैटिक आर्टरी Hmm. Having a large supply from the superior mesenteric artery and a lesser supply from the ciliary trunk. So you said that it has to be. Uh, uh, is it a necessary that is it has to be a ciliary artery stenosis which leads to this uh, decreased supply, or it can be a naturally decreased supply from the ciliary trunk? It can be a naturally decreased supply, and you may not, sometimes never be able to make it out on cross-sectional imaging. Yeah, because I think you were emphasizing that ciliary artery stenosis should be left. That I was mentioning on higher plate collateral. Uh, I was just trying to come to a fact that if you see a replaced right hepatic artery, ninety nine percent of time left artery or yeah left lobe ki koi bhi branch replaced right se arise nahi karti. And hum dus saal pehle to blindly believe karte the. Humne publish bhi kar diya ki R H S se left artery aati nahi. Hai na? Ab pichle kuch chhe saat saalon mein bees example dekhiye ki segment four artery. Yes, uh, accessory branches to uh, the cystic duct plate. Yes, segment three ki taraf jaane lagi from replaced RHA. So that means it is not always true. Maybe we were doing something uh, I don't know. Um, so and second yes. thing is I mentioned specially about replaced RHA because जब विफल्स के लिए हम surgery लेते हैं हम सिर्फ सिलेक्ट एक्सेस एस एम ए देखते हैं पोर्टल में देखते हैं एस एम बी देखते हैं उसका कॉन्फ्लुएंस देखते हैं एंगल निकालते हैं और हम सर्जरी के लिए ले लेते हैं वी शुड ऑलवेज लुक एट प्रेजेंस ऑफ रिप्लेस आर एच इन सी एफ एंक्रियाज ऑल्सो और अगर बाकी सब कुछ ऑपरेबल है तो हमने चार पांच बार उसको बैक बेंच पे काट के मतलब एन ब्लॉक निकाला है विद दी ट्यूमर एंड देन री एन एस्ट मोस्ट दैट आर एच ए बैक बिकॉज इट इज लाइफ सेविंग प्रोसेस लेफ्ट साइड इट गॉल बैटर शुड नॉट बी टन एज ए डोनर आई कैन यू री एक्सरसाइज ऑन दैट दैट वॉज स्टिल कंफ्यूजन टू डू नॉर्मली क्या है कि गॉल बैडर लाइज इन द इंटर सेगमेंटल फिशर यस राइट इफ द गॉल बैडर लाइज इन दी फैल्सिफॉर्म लेगमेंट दैट मीन्स इट हैज गॉन बोल्ड टूवर्ड दी लेफ्ट साइड सो नाउ इन दिस दी एम एच वी विल नॉट ड्रेन सेगमेंट सिक्स सेवन यू डो नॉट नो विच इज द एम एच वी बिकॉज देर इज नो राइट लोब और लेफ्ट लोब गॉल बैडर तो चला गया फैल्सिफॉर्म लेगमेंट में एक लैंडमार्क आपका एम एच वी तो चला गया उधर राइट so so what has happened falciform is dividing 2 3 2 from 4 in a normal setting falciform divides segment 2 3 from segment 4 now gallbladder is lying at segment uh, in the falciform ligament so whatever to the left of gallbladder is segment 2 and 3 and what is to the right of gallbladder is segment 4 and the entire right lobe and there is no demarcation between the two intrahepatic haphazard portal vein or arterial vein branching hogi इन दी रिमेनिंग राइट लोब और हैफ हजर्ड ही लेफ्ट लोब की ब्रांचिंग होगी इसमें क्लासिकल पैटर्न नहीं होता कोई भी एक पोर्टल वेन होती है कई बार टाइप ही पोर्टल वेन कॉमन है लेफ्ट साइड गॉल बैटर के साथ सिंगल पोर्टल वेन सो अगर ये दिख जाए कभी के फैल्सिफम लेगामेंट में गॉल बैटर पड़ा है तो बाकी आर्टरी वेन भी देख लेनी चाहिए कि वो हैफ हजर्ड चल रही होंगी और जैसे पोलिस स्टेट में करनी है कई बार होता है आप पोलिस स्टेट में लैंड अप किए जीबी नहीं मिल रहा जीबी फोसा में वो तो सेंटर में पड़ा था क्लोज टू द फैल्सिफम लेगामेंट तो उसमें यू हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल कि मैं कुछ और स्ट्रक्चर इंजर ना कर दूं क्योंकि उसमें बहुत वेरिएंट एनाटमी है 
होगी सो so, इसीलिए एक इम्पॉर्टेंट चीज थी क्योंकि अब हम इतना सर्जिकल रिसेप्शन देखते हैं तो कहीं लेफ्ट गॉल बेटर एज अ डोनर ना खुल जाए थ्री डी तीन वेन दिखा देगा थ्री डी दो वेन दिखा देगा अब ये टेक्नीशियन और रेडोलॉजिस्ट के ऊपर है वो उसको मेडल बैटिक वेन मान के आपको राइट लेफ्ट का वॉल्यूम निकाल दे वो एमएचपी थी नहीं क्योंकि कोई पता नहीं वो क्या होगी होगी वो वेरिएंट कोई ओके गुड थैंक्स संदीप इट वाज रियली वेरी गुड सेशन वी नीड टू क्लोज स्टूडेंट्स वंस अगेन व्हाट डॉक्टर संदीप एम्फोसाइज दैट व्हेन यू आर लुकिंग एट द एनाटॉमी ऑफ द वेसल्स एंड डक्ट्स यू नीड टू बी मोर कॉशियस व्हेन यू आर डीलिंग विद अ ट्रांसप्लांट राधर देन विद अ रिसेक्शन बिकॉज इन रिसेक्शन patient you are going to remove a segment which will go uh, for histopathology whereas in transplant you are dealing with a normal person you have to be worried about the remnant liver as well as the graft both have to remain viable both have to function so it's very very important to know and look for these intricacies and abnormalities of the intrahepatic anatomy and the second point which he mentioned that if for whatever reason you have done an mr in a patient who is undergoing cholecystectomy don't just look at the presence or absence of cbd stones look at the upper end also look for the anomalies which will if it is there then it will make your cholecystectomy even more safe than uh, you want it to be so thank you sandeep thank you very much uh, for thank accepting you, the invitation it was a very good very well illustrated talk and i'm sure you will give us more time in future uh, for some more sessions thank, thank you, you sir thank you. thank you bye ajay thank you thank bye. you